In a prior session, we walked through deploying this ZOS Java application to a ZOS mainframe. And we ran it on the mainframe in the USS environment. USS stands for Unix System Services, and its environment very similar to other Unix systems. In this session, we're going to be running this application in a traditional ZOS batch environment. To do this, we need a launcher that can launch this Java application in the batch environment. And the launcher that we're going to be using is a JSOS batch launcher. <clears throat> JSOS batch launcher is essentially a single load module that allows you to launch Java applications from within existing ZOS batch environment. So let's take a look at this batch launcher. Open up remote systems view and go to our Java installation on our ZOS Unix file system. In it, there's a directory called NVS tools and underneath it, there is a file called JVM LDM 86. This is a JSOS batch launcher. JVM stands for JVM, LDM is, stands for load module, and 86 stands for Java 8 ver, um, 64 bit. And this is the version that we'll be using to launch Java on ZOS. <clears throat> we're going to copy this file under a data set, and we're going to create this data set first. So to create this data set, let's go to our NVS file section. Click on New, Allocate Partition Data Set. We're going to use our existing connection name, DCIMGCS, data set name prefix of Java FT1, and give it high risk <coughs> life. Click Next. And I'm going to specify data set characteristics uh, manually. Let's do one primary quantity, one secondary quantity, zero directory blocks, record format of view, and block size of 32760. And we're allocating this data set as a library, which is a PDSE type data set, and click Finish. There we go. Right now, it is just an empty data set because we haven't copied anything to it. <clears throat> I'm going to copy JV and LDM to the newly created data set. So to do so, let's go to the NVS tools folder and uh, launch a shell. <clears throat> Here we have JVM LDM 86. I'm going to copy this JVM LDM 86 with the dash X flag to Java FT1 high risk JSOS load live, which is a newly created partition data set with the member name of JVM LDM 86. So we're keeping the name the same. If you go back to our remote system view, and go to the MVS file section and refresh on high risk JSOS low live, you will be able to see that JVM LDM 86 is copied. So now we copy over the JSOS low live, uh, the load module, to our MVS file system. Excellent. But we also need a couple more things. We need a JCL for executing this low live and we need a JCL just for executing um, our Java application. <clears throat> and the JSOS samples are included in the Java SDK on ZOS. So if we go back to our Unix file system, and go look in our Java installation home directory under NVS tools, samples, JCL, you can see that there are two JCL files. One is called JVM JCL 86, the other 
JVM PRC86. JVM PRC86 is a proc that will execute the JSOS load module that we just copied over to our NVS file system. And JVM JCL86 will invoke this proc with custom application parameters that are specific to the application that we're executing. So let's copy both of these files. So I'm going to copy to our um, NVS file system. Oh, before we do that, let's create a partition data set to contain the two files that we're going to copy over. So again, we're going to create a new partition data set, leave the connection, of, connection name the same, the same prefix, high risk dot JSOS dot JCL. <coughs> Click next. And I'm going to specify my own data set characteristics. Let's also allocate one cylinder for primary and one for secondary. Uh, let's leave 20 directory blocks. Um, record format fixed block. Record length of 80. We're going to change block size to 27,920. <clears throat> and this time, instead of allocating a data set type of library, we will do a data set type of PDS. Click finish. And here we go. Java FT1, high risk, JSOS, JCL. Now let's copy over these two JCL to this partition data set. Copy, paste. All right, let's modify these two JCL to our own environment. And then we can run our Java application under the normal ZOS batch environment. Let's edit the proc JVM PRC 86. Because we um, didn't use the system default JSOS load module, remember we copied over our own JSOS load module uh, we'll need to specify library, and this will point to the location of the, mold, uh, of the load module, which is Java FT1 dot high risk dot JSOS dot load live. And Java version is 86, that's correct. Java 8, 64-bit. And because we have our own copy of the JSOS low module, we need to uncomment the step live DD statement. Everything else in this file should remain the same. There's not much changes needed to this file. All right, let's edit the actual job that we're going to submit, <clears throat> the JVM JCL86. Here, as you can see, we're executing the proc called JVM PRC86. And the Java class that we're executing is read payee data. And we're going to pass it some arguments, which is basically the data set name that we want to read. So this, in this case, it's Java FT1 dot high risk dot data dot payee. <clears throat> and here, stdenv, this essentially is a um, script where you can run 
to set up your Java environment. Um, in this case, we're going to set up our Java home, export a bunch of paths so it knows where to look for the, for the Java home directory. Um, <clears throat> here I'm going to export my customized version of Java that I have at home, Java FT1 slash Java on Z slash Java <clears throat> slash J8.0 underscore 64. And everything else looks good. And over here, the app home is the location of your application. And in our case, it's at home Java FT1 slash Java on Z slash insurance slash source. And uh, if you want to confirm the path, you can just open up Remote Explorer, browse to your Unix file system, and just look at uh, my home, Java on Z, insurance, source, and this is where we pay data. Um, source and class files are at. Every, everything else pretty much stays the same. <clears throat> and finally, we'll need to add a job card to this job. So let me paste my existing job card into this file right here. What this basically says is to execute a job called JSOS job with a bunch of parameters and to look for the proc in this data set, which is Java FT1 high risk JSOS JCL. All right, it looks like we have everything. Um, we pointed to the correct Java home directory we pointed to the correct app home directory, and we have the correct Java class name, repay data, and the correct arcs, which is the data set to read from, Java FT1 high risk data payee. Let's execute this in our traditional batch environment and see what we get. Open up remote systems. Go all the way to the MVS file system section and right click on JVM JCL86 and click on submit. I don't know if you can see this file. It's this right here, submit. I'm going to submit, notify. And job completed with completion code 000. Let's take a look at the job. Um, which job this is? It's 149. Let's, we have our remote systems window open. Let's go to Jess and refresh my jobs. Here's job 149. Let's go check out standard output. Wow, there we go. Here is the payee's name, address, and amount to be paid. And we have a list of payees. And we can also look at the system output. Basically, it's using the JLS batch launcher version 248. And this is the Java SDK version that we're running with. And you'll see trace for reading payee data main completed with return code zero. So we just uh, launched our Java application in a traditional batch environment and ran it successfully entirely through Eclipse.